So what do we got here? Well, it's a desk, but it's not really a desk. It's actually a gun. It's a gun desk. Yes. When you push down on the inkwell, a bullet fires out through the trap door. Sweet. That means I got a gun aimed at my right now. <laughs> I'm coming down to the pawn shop today to try and sell my gun desk. I have no idea how much it's worth. I just really am curious what it was used for and how old it is. If I sell it, that's fine. If I don't, I'm OK with that, too. Where in the world did you get this? I got it in an estate sale. I was just looking for a nice little desk to put a guest book on. When we got it home, I was trying to figure out how to open it and had a really good look inside it and said, you know, this isn't a, a desk, this is a gun. I've seen guns concealed in all kinds of things, swords, canes, even cameras. I've seen desks with hidden gun compartments, but I've never seen a desk as a gun. It's something straight out of a James Bond movie. It's not loaded. Why are you sticking your face in there? I, th I'm, this is why I'm keeping it at an angle here. I just don't get it. I mean, you're really not going to stop anybody if you shoot them in the thigh with a small 22 like that. Well, it's not even a regular 22. It's a 22 short or something, it looks like. I mean, the problem is there's no barrel there. The bullet is not going to come out with a lot of power because there's no barrel for back pressure to build up to send the bullet flying. I have never seen one before. I have no idea what this thing is. I only buy guns that are made 1898 and back. That makes it an antique firearm that doesn't have to be registered with the ATF or anything else like that. The problem I have here is I don't know the date this thing was made. Do you mind if I have a buddy look at this thing? Because I am just completely lost here. Not at all. That's Thanks. great. Thanks. I really want this desk. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. But until I know for sure it was made in 1898 or before, I can't legally buy it. So where's the gun? This is the gun. What? <laughs> My name is Sean Rich. I own Tortuga Trading Incorporated, and I specialize in antique arms and armor. This thing is a gun. You press there, there's the trigger. That falls down, hits the hammer. The bullet flies out this way. You ever seen one? I've never seen this. What is the practical application? That's, I, that's I, what's I, going I, through I, my head. I don't see one myself. To have this all built in like this in a tiny little desk, nobody's going to buy this for their children. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I have been collecting guns and weapons since I was 10 years old. I've never seen anything like this. You can see that it's been broken in half once before, but I do not think that a bullet hitting this broke that in half. And if it did, it would have blown this completely off. Oh, or I it would have that. put a hole in it at yes. the very minimum. The realm that this item falls into is a collector's novelty. It could have been even just a one-off or maybe a movie prop, what have you. Who knows what it was really used for? The other thing is, I don't know how old this thing is. Anything manufactured before 1898 is OK. You can ship it. You can buy and sell, no problem. Anything after 1898 has to be registered through an FFL licensed dealer with the ATF. The barrel is so tiny, but it's open-ended, means that it could shoot a projectile, and that's an issue. And the other part of this is that, OK, it's one to have a gun, but now you have a concealed weapon because it's a hidden gun. Have you had it apart? Yes. OK, was there any name of manufacturer or any kind of markings on the firing mechanism? There was the beginnings of a patent number. It said patent one, and then you can't read the rest. Ugh. It looks to be in that 1890s to about 1910 era, oh, but good. I couldn't tell you one way or the other for absolute certainty. So if I can't guarantee it, it's, it's a gray area for you, and it's not worth the risk. Here's an option. You'd have to bring it to a gunsmith and have him professionally deactivate the mechanism. Then it can be legal to buy and sell. Oh, I'd love to do that, then. I'll, that's okay. what I'll do. I wish I could help you out more. It's just one of those things. Thanks for bringing it in. Oh, you're welcome. I really wish I could have bought this, because the odds of another gun desk coming in here are slim to none. But the law is the law. Hopefully, she'll get it deactivated and bring it back, because I would love to have it. A seller came in earlier with a sword pistol that was probably made in the 16 or 1700s. With an asking price of $20,000, I'm not even going to make an offer until Alex comes in and takes a look at it and I get his opinion. OK, this is completely <laughs> ridiculous and really cool at the same time. <laughs> in German, they call it a Hirschfanger. A what? A Hirschfanger. A Hirschfanger. 
and basically it means it's a sword pistol, as you can see. So to me, this looks like it was just a showpiece, but could it have ever been used as a weapon? It was made to kill wild boar once they were injured. So it was strictly for hunting. This wasn't a combat type piece. Royalty, landed gentry, they'd go out in the woods, they would shoot at boar, they'd injure them, they'd catch up to the boar, and they would try to stick it with the sword to finish it off. But if the boar was still moving, they could have the pistol to bring it down as well. Because that particular little teeny pistol looks like it would just really piss anything off. Yeah, well, that's why the boar has to be injured first. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So is Late 1600s, maybe? Yeah, or early 1700s, probably more like it. And the gun maker here says London kit. But the thing is, they didn't really use these in England because the wild boar population had been overhunted. So by about 1700, there really weren't wild boars in England anymore. The interesting thing here is this is a very classic German design. And this gun maker, Philip van de Vees, who was originally Dutch, moved to London and started making high-end firearms for the gentry. And you can see, I mean, it is gorgeous. In its day, this was about the very nicest Hirschfanger money could buy. So what does a super fancy Hirschfanger go for? Well, I would like to know if this could fire. If this could fire, it would show that it was truly built properly and not just for show. If not, the value drops quickly. OK. Would it be possible to fire this? I think it's absolutely necessary. All right, let's go to the gun range in the morning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, meet you guys there. All right, Rick. Thanks, Rick. Have a good one. I'm a little nervous about firing this sword pistol because it is very old. Anytime you deal with old firearms, there's always a chance of failure. Thank you. So the plan is we're going to take that melon, mm -hmm. we're going to put it out over there, I'm going to demonstrate how the sword would work as if it were a wild boar. So give it a couple of stabs. And then I'll finish it off with the pistol. If the pistol works, we know that it wasn't a costume piece, that it was really made as a purpose-built tool. Then I'll be able to value it for you. So how much are you asking for this? I'm thinking 20000 OK. Let's see if this shoots, because that's half the fun from being out here. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. All right. I'm going to go set up my brother. I'll load it up. Yeah, really never did like him. Just, it was a mama's boy. So what caliber is this thing? Uh, it's close to a 22. It's a little larger than that, but I'm going to actually put in a smaller projectile. Since it's so old, I want to keep the pressure inside the chamber low. Because okay. if the pressure's too high, it'll blow my hand off. As long as it's not in my hand. <laughs> So because I'm going a lower caliber, I patch the projectile. So it takes up the space inside the barrel. OK. OK, we're ready. All right. So the idea is that that is an injured wild boar. I'm going to finish it off, put it out of its misery, so you'd stab it a couple of times in the neck, ideally. One. Two, three. Then you'd step away. If it still wasn't dead or it started to run away. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> that surprised me. It worked. Yeah, I'm impressed. That was actually a good little explosion for that little gun. OK, it works. It's real. What do you think this thing is worth? I really like it. It's unique. It's beautiful. It comes from London, not from Germany. The silver grip with the negative space. I mean, there's, it has a lot going for it. And you're not going to see another one anytime soon. The issue is, what's the market for it? It's very specific. It's hunting oriented. I think the realistic value in today's market is about $12,000. OK. Sorry to disappoint. All right. Rick, All good right. luck, man. See you, man. The sword pistol worked. It's not the most powerful gun I've ever had, but it totally worked. It is rare, but there are not a ton of collectors out there looking for this. So it's a good buy for Rick at the right price. What will you take for it? 12000 Well, that would make absolutely no sense to me. Uh, I'll give you seven. I'll go ten fifty. There's no money at that. I mean, I'll go 7,500 bucks. That'd be like it. 
Well, you're not going to find another one like it. Well, I know that. I'll never find another one exactly like it, but I'll find another 500 weird things I can buy and make mo more money off of. Give me your top dollar. That's it. That's it? It takes time to sell. It's a limited market. I think I can probably do better at an auction or at uh, in one of the specialty shows. All right, man, if you change your mind, give me a call. All right, man, thank you very much for your time. I'm OK with not making a deal today, because I think if I'd settled today, I'd regret it tomorrow. In the end, I think I'm going to make more money on this. Is worth it just to see uh, Alex almost blow himself up? <laughs> <laughs> see you, bud. How you doing? Doing all right. What do you have here? What I have is a belt buckle pistol. This is actually pretty cool. This was the concealed gun of all concealed guns, I right. guess. Right. It looks like this is the trigger right here. Right. A lot of the times what would happen is you would have a string tied to here and would run up through your arm and be tied to a ring or something on your sleeve. And then if you move your hand up, it would fire the gun. Mm -hmm. So kind of a sneaky little gun. I imagine there's no markings on it. Am I wrong? Is there markings? I have not seen any type of marking on it. Yeah, and that's because the guy making this wouldn't really want to advertise that he's the sneaky guy making these kind oh. of guns. It's definitely been used, and looks like it's got some rusting on it, but you would kind of expect that. Does it work? I have never fired it. I've never tried to fire it. The story has been lost. We don't really know where it came from, but it's been in the family for generations. OK. I'm not exactly sure how collectible this gun would be, because it is hard to figure out who made it. But I do know there is a market for this kind of stuff. So what would you like to do with it? I want to sell it. And how much are you looking for? I'd like to have $500. That seems pretty reasonable, actually. Um, I do need to know a little bit more about it before I go ahead and make you an offer. Give me just a moment. I'm going to go grab my guy, Alex, and see if he can tell us a little bit more about this. Don't go anywhere, all right? Sure. Thanks. Hi. Hi. I'm Alex. George, good to meet you. Nice to meet you, George. George has this pretty freaking cool belt gun. <laughs> George, you mind if I pick it up? Please do. Oh, wow. So my first feeling about this is that it's incredibly dangerous. <laughs> well, those were dangerous times back then. Yeah. So what's interesting about this is that the entire firing mechanism is contained behind this back plate here. And the trigger down here, it's got a loop through it. So there must be, in the original design of this, some type of lanyard or string or wire which would actually be able to fire it concealed. I'm going to take the belt off. Is sure. that all right? So this hammer is from an old shotgun, probably from the 1880s, okay. 1890s. And I think that's about what this dates. What I'm curious about is what caliber this barrel is. I'm wondering if that is a standard caliber for the time or if it's just a homemade piece of pipe. If it's a correct caliber of the time, would that make it more valuable than, say, if it was just a piece of pipe? Yes. And the reason of that is because if it's just a piece of pipe that somebody made and stuck on there, maybe it's a homemade thing that's not very old. If it's a caliber that was in use at the time, it would show me that it was made that way for a practical purpose. This is a caliber that measures the inside dimension of the bore. So that's right at 3.6, and that's really good, because 3.6 was actually a really standard percussion revolver caliber. So I don't think that this was a homemade prop or anything. I think somebody actually really did make this 1890s, probably, but it's a one-off. I don't think this was mass-produced. I think it was made one at a time maybe as something that they sold in a saloon, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but it's that type of feel. It's got an Old West kind of feel to it. OK, and what kind of price would you put on it? I, I think you need to see if it works. I would suggest that if you're OK with it, I have the correct lead balls for it, 36 caliber. And I think I strap it on, and we see how it works. As long as you're the one strapping it on, I'm all for it. <laughs> Would you be willing to meet us down at the range with this? I can do that. Sounds good. Uh, we'll see you down at the range okay. and uh, take a look around and hopefully you enjoy your time here. All right. Thanks a lot. See Thank you. you. Soon. 
So I set up three big balloons so I wouldn't miss, even though I'm going to be very close. Well, I think even with this wind, you should be a good shot today. <laughs> I hope so. So I brought some supplies. I have black powder. I have 36 round lead balls, which that'll be the projectile. And I have some grease. And the grease is actually going to help me keep the powder and the ball in. I'm ready to see this thing working. OK. So you getting excited yet? I, I am excited. <laughs> All right, so let's see how I aim this. All right, so now to full cock. You ready? Go. Ah. <laughs> well, we got two. That's pretty neat. Yeah, it works. I don't know how much damage it would do to somebody, but it definitely would stop them, at least for a little bit. So what do you think it's worth? Well, I, there's not a whole lot out there to compare it to. But because it's antique, because it's from about 1890, I think there is a collector's value to it. I could see it selling between three and 4,000. OK. Thanks for coming out and testing it. All right. You're welcome. I'll All see right. you back at the event. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'll bring your stuff back. Don't worry, Alex. OK, thanks. All right, I'll give you 500 for it. Well, you know, Alex uh, had a little better opinion of it than that. How about we go 2,500? How about 1,500? We'll split the difference at 2,000. Maybe like 17 is probably the max I could do. I mean, it's really cool, but it is a very niche collector's market. All right, you got a deal. All right, well, I'm happy to have it, and um, we'll get you some cash. OK, thanks a lot. All right, thank you. I'll You're get this welcome. stuff. I got to get back to the event. OK. Earlier, a guy came in with an old toy cannon. I'm definitely interested, but I'm not sure what it's worth. So I called my buddy down to take a look. Hey, Johnny, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Check this out. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, these are the Big Bang cannons. That looks great. The guys usually call me down when they have a question about vintage toys. It's a cool piece. I mean, these were made well. They're American made. When these were made, they were a safer alternative for kids. Than gunpowder. Exactly. You know, once it's used properly, just basically produce a flash and a loud bang. It does. This thing works like a shotgun. Yeah, they're cool toys. There's definitely a big market for the cannon, being that there's a lot of people who collect a lot of the old toys from the 50s and 60s. I've seen some of the original Big Bang cannons go for huge amounts of money. So what are your concerns about the piece, Rick? You know, I, I've seen the Big Bang cannons before. I have no idea how old it is, what it's worth. OK. Do you mind if I take a closer look? You go right ahead. Well, this version, this model here is cast iron. This exact model is pretty much being produced today. Oh, man. There's corrosion, and that's why you know, I thought it was older. The patina really doesn't mean a whole lot, because the kids put water in here. And then you get the calcium buildup and a lot of the other things that would age this very quickly. They give it the look that it's a lot older than what it is. So is it from the 50s? Um, doesn't have the marks. And there's a few other indicators that say this is a little bit later. The steel wheels are the first version. This is the later one. I would have to say this is um, probably 70s, 80s. What's it worth? Being this is a later version, and they're still producing these today, this one I would put a price of about um, 100 bucks. OK. Thanks, Johnny. All You're right. the best. No problem. Right, Take care, guys. Later, this is a later piece. This is one of the earlier versions. And a lot of these survive because they were made so well. So unfortunately, the value of the piece would only be about 100 bucks. So it's a $100 cannon. Yep, I'll give you 50 bucks for it. Oh, man. 50? Wow. I wanted more than that. I really, really wanted more than that. 50 bucks, man. That's what I could go. 120? 50 bucks. 80? I'll go 50 bucks, man. Yeah, OK. You got it. All right, 50 bucks. 50 bucks is very low. I'm kind of disappointed, but what are you going to do? 
You ready to do this, shall we? Yeah, let's fire it. One, two, three. Oh! oh. That was dope. That thing's pretty loud. It does the job. What do you think, Corey? I think it's, it's awesome. pretty cool. I cannot believe you're a part of this. You're supposed to be the voice of reason around here, maybe? I am. These two are idiots. The last thing I want to do is give these guys the idea it's all right to play with things that blow up at the shop. All right, all I know is if you guys are going to do it, I'm going to do it, too. <laughs> but, like, who doesn't fire a cannon when they get the chance? Come on. <laughs> get back to work, everybody. All right, I'll put it away. Don't play with it. Put it away. Oh, I'm going to. Put it away, chum. <laughs>